Hey, welcome back to Die Cash Cars. So if you go back and watch the very first video that I uploaded to YouTube, you'll see that I reviewed a 2021 master set. And one of the cars that I highlighted out of that set was this car right here, the 70s Chevy Camaro RS in green. At the time, it was believed to have been a retailer exclusive that never came to fruition. We never saw it released. We never saw it communicated what store it was supposed to come to. And at the time, the only place you could get it was out of the master set, which meant that there were only 1,000 examples of this in existence, at least at that date. So that rationale immediately spiked the value of this car. It was initially selling for $100, and since that December, January time frame, it's tapered down. Just early July, it was selling for about $70. And then just two weeks ago, it was reported that this car started to show up at Walgreens in a display along with 2022 G-Case cars. I believe it was actually Mad Visions who posted the first picture and got it submitted to T-Hunted. So big ups to Mad Visions over there. But as you expect, this car plummeted in value. Literally the following week after it was announced that it was showing up at Walgreens, the price went from $70 for the factory seal down to $20 and the cars that we were finding at Walgreens were selling anywhere from $10 to $15. And today it's even lower guys. I know on eBay you're still seeing like $5 to $10 but I've seen these go as low as like $2 to $3 a piece right now. So that is just a current example that I wanted to share with you guys to talk about today's topic which is selling Hot Wheels. How do you time the market just right so that you can sell cars at the peak value? Before we start guys, I will just say that the rule of thumb with selling your Hot Wheels or any collectible items is if you need to sell, go ahead and sell, go ahead and clean house. Whether that's for purposes outside of the hobby, maybe you got responsibilities that you need to take care of, by all means go and handle that stuff first. Or let's say you're selling cars in order to buy more expensive pieces, grail pieces, etc. Go ahead and clean house, get them on the market, sell them, and do what you got to do. And don't look back, don't regret that you missed out on any kind of opportunities because the market's going to go up, the market's going to go down. Sometimes we catch it right in stride and sometimes we miss it. That's just the game. It all balances itself out in the long run. I will also preface guys that the examples that I'm going to go through today are just my own personal speculations, my own thought processes, so don't take anything too close to heart guys. I'm not trying to demean any cars in your collection or any cars in my own collection, but just going through my logic on what I determine is a good sell candidate and maybe that'll help guide you in peace and parting out your collection as well. So with all that out of the way, the first example that I want to talk about is this one right here. So the 87 Toyota pickup truck, but two models, two releases specifically I wanted to talk about. This one right here, the Evan Mock collaboration with Hot Wheels in black, as well as the Back to the Future 87 Toyota pickup in black. Both cars currently right now on the secondary market go for around $160, but Again, guys, my speculation is that these cars are probably at the peak of their value, if not almost at the peak of their value. And again, I'm talking about reading the market and what I've seen this last year. We know that the Toyota license is back in Hot Wheels hands. So we know that we're going to start to see a lot more Toyotas get pumped out in the next couple of years here. I'm sure we're going to see them a lot more prevalent in premium and mainline i'm guessing we're gonna see a super treasure hunt here pretty soon another car that i feel like is definitely gonna make a return is the black toyota 87 pickup from back to the future so we know that every year in retro entertainment we see another delorean time machine pop up whether it's the railroad version or the hover mode now that toyota is back in the fold i feel like it's a matter of time before we just see this car pop up back into a premium retro entertainment lineup and i feel like this evan mach 87 toyota pickup 
will not plummet in value, but I think it'll go down, as well as the original release of the Back to the Future 87 Toyota pickup. I feel like collectors are going to be a lot more accepting of a $5 re-release versus a $160 original premium release or in this case $160 RLC collaboration even though they might have more significance. The same can be said about Fast and Furious premium sets. So we already know here in 2022 there's already another Fast and Furious premium set that's going to be coming out later this year. I think the only difference is that those cars have black wheels, but I know it includes the Eclipse and the Silver R34, a couple of other cars, but basically what that re-release is going to do is make the original releases of these premium Fast and Furious cars go down. In anticipation of this guys, I've already started to get rid of a lot of my single Fast and Furious premium cars. The only ones that I'm actually keeping are these Amazon exclusive collector boxes just because I feel like they have a little bit more exclusivity next up we got the 2018 Honda Civic Type R the FK8 here I have the Super Treasure Hunt that was just released last year this Super Treasure Hunt currently is selling for about 50 to 60 dollars but as excited as we were of this car and as nice as it looks I feel like it's gonna slowly depreciate in value and the reason is in real life Honda has already announced the 11th gen of the Honda Civic and the Honda Civic Type R and we're not gonna lie guys it looks good it's so much cleaner than the FK8 it doesn't have all these extra faux vents that don't do anything it has a hood vent not a hood scoop that looks a lot more subtle nice clean carbon fiber wing in the back i mean it just looks a lot better and it's being held by honda as being the fastest strongest honda civic type r ever produced the claims like that i feel like everything is going to transfer into the hot wheel world hot wheels is going to make the new honda civic type r the 11th gen and this 2018 civic type r as nice as it is is going to become obsolete values are going to come down it might be $60 today for the Super Treasure Hunt, but it might drop 15 to 20% after that happens. Again, just my speculation, guys. And the last car I wanted to talk about, guys, and I was very hesitant on it, was the Toyota Supra. And I know what you guys are thinking. One of the most popular JDM casts coming out there. With Toyota back in the lineup for Hot Wheels, this is definitely a cast to chase. But for some reason, guys, I have a hunch that Hot Wheels is going to be looking to retool this cast. And it's not a terrible cast. I mean, it looks pretty accurate. I mean, you can tell it's a Supra, but the front end, the bumper, you know it's definitely not OEM. The giant wing in the back just looks like a big two by four that's attached to the car it doesn't even look like a functional wing i just feel like this car was made in an era where this was in style but modern day i feel like collectors are looking for more of an oem effect a lot like what we're seeing from auto world right now and i will actually say that i'm pretty impressed with auto world supra I mean, just the details. I mean, obviously you get the, the lens headlights. The wheels look just like the OEM wheel. I mean, they're doing factory colors. The whole entire body format of the cars are all factory. I mean, I will argue that this is probably the best Supra casting for under $10 right now. So back to the Supra, I just feel like it's time for a retool and Hot Wheels is no stranger to retooling cars. I mean, we've seen that with the A86 already. You can see the original cast, which looks extra bubbly and disproportionate. They retooled it right after getting the license. It looks so much cleaner, more refined, more accurate and to scale. I just feel like pretty soon we're going to see that happen with the Toyota Supra as well too. And when that does, I feel like 
And again, I'm on the fence about this, but I feel like one direction you could see that this super's value would come down because people are going to gravitate towards that newer cast and hopefully more OEM looking cast. This Supra, Super Treasure Hunt right now goes for about $100. I could see it going under the $100 mark. But on the flip side of that, I've also seen retools actually improve the price of cars. Thinking about the old school Nissan Skyline R32 with the M factory wide body kit. So again, it was definitely appreciated in its time, but obviously collectors nowadays have moved towards a more OEM style of body, which prompt Hot Wheels to make this retool of the R32, again, a lot more OEM, a lot more sleek, a lot more refined and true to the OEM format. But the interesting thing is that although this Skyline R32, the new one, is fairly popular, currently it sells for about $80 on the secondary marketplace, this Skyline has continued, the original R32 Skyline has continued to grow in value and in demand. So it's almost like the retool, if anything, just helped its value go up, right? So two sides of the fence, let me know where you fall on that, but I still feel like regardless, we still need a retool of the Supra. So just sharing some of my logic as far as how I determine what are good sell candidates within my collection. Let me know if there's any tips that you use to determine what cars you sell out of your own collection. Like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time on Die Cash Cars.